Hello, my name is Diatra Bitsash. I'm a product lead at Johnson Labs. And today I'm going to talk about auto NLP, or how to pre-train, tune, and deploy state-of-the-art models without coding. So a problem we've been working on for a while now is how to empower non-technical people to train NLP model, deploy them, and then use them to solve complex tasks such as sentiment analysis, name and entity recognition, document classification, all of that without writing a line of code. And in a context of requirements for processing high volume of documents with high accuracy and at high speed. The solution we propose for this problem is the use of the annotation lab. The annotation lab is a high productivity annotation tool, uh, which is very intuitive and easy to learn and to use by domain experts or non-technical persons. Uh, it provides a lot of functionalities for speeding up the annotation, making it, it very easy to the use of keyboard shortcuts, automatic transition between documents, and so on. It also offers support for teamwork. So you can work on multiple projects at the same time with different teams, uh, and you can find grain um, the permissions of different users uh, using roles. It also offers support for customizable workflows. So you can have in your workflow validation, apart from annotation review, model training, and so on. It offers supports for collaboration as it allows users to compare different versions of the annotation, to share guidelines, to compare uh, predictions made by different models. It has a versioning for the completions and the predictions and a full audit trail for both human actions and automatic actions. Finally, and the most important feature the annotation lab offers is the active learning. So it is tightly integrated with Spark NLP library and it offers, it exposes all of the pre-trained models that we have on the models hub. Uh, those can be very easily applied for new projects in order to generate pre-annotations so that the work does not start, the annotation work does not start from scratch every time. It also uh, uses uh, closed loop automation where you use the pre-trained models to uh, generate predictions, then you annotate and correct those predictions if necessary. You can retrain your model or fine tune it, measure the accuracy and so on and start from scratch. So you can do this um, whole loop, all of that without writing a line of code. So this is the usual uh, workflow of an annotation project, especially for name entity recognition. So first of all, you define the taxonomy or the list of labels that you want to extract. Then you define the annotation guidelines and then people or domain experts start working on the documents, manually annotating them. After that, if sometimes a validation step is also uh, required in the, process, in the project done by more senior annotators or more experienced annotators, or you can also go with the cross-validation between uh, different members of the annotation team. It's also uh, best practice to have disagreement settlement meetings where you discuss edge cases for different labels, and if necessary, uh, you update the guidelines, then you correct the backlog, and so on. Now, as you can imagine, this process is very slow. It takes a lot of time and effort, and uh, it's very difficult to assure um, coherence and consistency between annotations uh, of the same user or all across the team. Now, how can we speed up this process and how can we improve the accuracy of the uh, actual annotation? Well, first of all, we can use pre-annotations which are generated by pre-trained Spark NLP models. Uh, we can do that after the definition of the taxonomy and after the definition of the annotation guidelines. We run the pre-annotations on the documents, on the whole batch of documents. We present the annotations to the user so that they don't start from scratch, so they have a, a baseline. They will only, this way, they will only um, check the existing annotations and correct them if necessary. Uh, and this will speed up a lot the annotation process. Then we can go even a step further and use the corrections which are defined by the human users or the domain experts in order to train or fine tune the models so that they're accuracy increases over time and the manual effort of the users decreases. 
So this is done by the active learning process, which takes the manual annotations and corrections done by the, the users, trains a new model, and exposes it into the tool, publishes in, it into the tool, so it can be reused for different projects or for the current project, also for the remaining batch of documents. Okay, now let's see how this works in practice. Let's log into the application. This will redirect us to the project screen. As you can see, there is no project defined at this point. Let's create a new project. You can define a name for your project and then a description. You can also put here the instructions or the annotation guidelines. But for the moment, let's say that we don't have any guidelines. Uh, you can check show completions of all users. This will allow users to see each other completions. And once the project is created, you can share it with your team member. So you can fine tune the permissions of each one of the team members. Usually the annotators have the right to create uh, view and view tasks. They don't have the right to export tasks, especially in uh, confidential projects. Um, okay, then you can check who has permissions to access this, pr this project. And you, you can also revoke the permissions if necessary. Then going down to the labeling configuration uh, screen, you can see that there are there is a long list of predefined project types. Let's go with the name entity recognition configuration. This will add a predefined configuration in the labeling config screen. Uh, you can also uh, access the Spark NLP pipeline config. Here you see a list of models that are available. If you want to see uh, all the available models, you can uh, check this on our models hub by navigating on our nlp.johnsonlab.com webpage. Here you see all available models. We are currently uh, working on improving this uh, the coverage of this page. You can search for the model that you need. You will see a description of the model, the list of predicted entities. You can also check a live demo and a notebook. So if you choose the live demo, you will see a streamy tab, which uh, applies the model for annotating uh, several text examples. You can see the results visually, but you can also check the collab notebooks, which will walk you through how to, um, the code that is needed to set up a Spark NLP, a Spark NLP instance and pipeline, and how to apply that pipeline uh, for annotating the different text examples. And here you will see also the results and so on. So you have here available some um, code example, model information, the data source that was used for training the model. So going back to our project, let's select the labels that we want to add and to use for this particular project. Let's say we are interested in symptoms, diagnosis, and every info, all information about drugs. Oh, so let's also remove um, the Default configuration is not of interest. Uh, let me just add a predefined configuration that I've already created. So I've just uh, assigned new colors uh, for the annotations and some hotkeys. Okay, so once this is done, you can save the project and you will be redirected to the import screen because currently we don't have any um, files or any documents. Uh, so we will import a couple of them. Uh, using the uh, JSON uh, option, JSON import options option. After that, we can go check the documents which have been imported on the tasks view. Here you see the three documents that I have just imported. They are all incomplete. That means that they are not worked on so far, so they don't have any completions. And if you go on the labeling screen for those documents, you see only the uh, raw text without any annotation. On top, you see the taxonomy. Uh, this is the same situation for three documents. So you see no completion, no predictions for them. And now you can choose to pre-annotate those documents using the two pre-trained models uh, from where the labels in the current taxonomy come from. So once the pre-annotation is complete, you can go to the labeling screen for those documents. You see that now a prediction is available in the prediction widget. Okay, by clicking on that prediction, you see 
all the labels which have been automatically generated by Spark NLP. Uh, you see that you cannot edit them, you just uh, um, see them, but you can create a new completion based on those, this prediction. The completion will be editable. So by clicking on each one of the labeled elements, you will see the actual label which is assigned to that piece of text and you will be able to modify it if necessary. Okay? Good. So now what the human, human annotator has to do is go through the document and check the, the predictions which were made, if necessary, correct them. Okay, for instance, in this particular situation. Okay, then we also have some uh, symptoms which were not uh, identified. Let's just quickly uh, label those symptoms. As you can see, this is, this is very easy to do by uh, using the keyboard uh, S key uh, in order to activate the label and then uh, selecting with the mouse uh, the text that you, want, that you want to annotate. Okay, so once all these annotations are done, you can submit the new completion and it will be saved in the database. Okay, you see on the right side the list of uh, annotated uh, elements and you can see on the tasks, task view that this document, the task zero, is now completed. You can also assign a tag to the document, um, which will actually define the workflow um, stage this document is in. So you can, in this way, uh, customize your workflow. Then you go ahead and uh, uh, check the next document, create a new completion based on the available predictions then maybe correct it or add additional uh, labels if uh, they were not correctly extracted or predicted by the model. Okay. And at the end, you just submit this one also. So as you can see, you, don't, you never start from scratch, so you have a lot of work already done for you. This will speed up the annotation process a lot. So um, what usually happens is that um, the annotators go through a couple of documents, correct them, okay, and use those new corrections in order to train a new model or to fine tune the model so that it will, the results will improve over time, okay. So you have different, uh, as I said, you can tag the documents with different um, um, stages of the workflow, for instance, this one, let's say it needs correction so that uh, an annotator will uh, review what's in this document. Let's change the color so that we see it differently. Okay, now let's activate the learning. So based on the, um, the new completions which were created by the user, Spark, a new Spark NLP model will be trained, okay? And it will be applied to all the documents within the project. Okay, this will not remove the already existing completions, but will add new predictions. As you can see, um, all the, ex the new examples which were created by, manually created by the annotators become available in the new, become available as predictions in the new model. Okay, let's check the other example. So this is a way to continuously improve the model performance, the model accuracy, okay, by correcting, then retraining, and then applying the new model. Okay. So uh, let's go check the setup page. And here you will see that there is a new model which is available on the uh, Spark NLP pipeline config. And this new, new model has the name of the current project and all the labels which were defined in this particular project. So the models will be automatically uh, deployed uh, on the web, on the server, and they become available right away. So after the training, they become available to the uh, annotation project, okay? Now you can use the new predictions to create new completions. 
uh, if you have multiple completions which are defined on the same um, task, you can choose which one of the completions to use when uh, training a new model or, or when fine-tuning uh, this model. And uh, you can do that by starring one completion. Uh, this will have uh, uh, the effect of marking that particular completions as uh, ground truth. So let me show you what that means. If we go to the export screen and export all the completions that we have for the current project, let's open this file. You will see a JSON file with a very simple structure. And in that JSON file, you will see three documents. Okay. Three documents. On the second document, we have two completions. One of the completion is marked as a honeycomb. So that means that this is the ground truth and that particular completion will be used for the model training. Uh, when you only have one uh, completion, that, will, um, that one will be used uh, to train the new model. Okay, so let's see how this, uh, all this looks from a, a normal user perspective. So I'm going to log in with another user, which is not an admin, but just uh, an, an annotator. I will see the projects which are shared with me. I see the drug annotation project, all the tasks. I will go inside of one, one task, so I will access the labeling screen. And here I don't see any completions because I have just deactivated that option but I see all the predictions which were made by the, the original Spark NLP pre-annotations and then by the new model that we have trained. This was the demo that I have prepared for today. Now let's go over a couple of results from, the, some, from some experiments that we have done uh, on the annotation lab. So first of all, we have used uh, the annotation lab on a project for annotating 1,400 documents uh, with a team of three domain experts in the medical field. So with just using the, the annotation lab without pre-annotations and without training uh, new models and without the learning functionality, this team was able to annotate and go through all the documents in a period of eight weeks. Using the pre-annotation, that time was reduced to two weeks. So 20% of the original uh, effort the second experiment that we have done was on a, a set of 204 documents which were pre-annotated using Spark NLP models and then they were manually corrected by our uh, domain experts. So um, on the first column you see all the entities which were um, extracted or predicted, the number of uh, those labels across the 204 documents, and then how many of those predictions needed to be um, corrected by, um, by the domain experts. So as a general conclusion, so there, are many, there were many entities in this project, only around 10% of the re results needed to be reworked. Okay, so this is a very high improvement on, um, and a, a high speed up of the whole annotation project, right? So you have around 90% of all the um, predicted labels were correct and the user only had to, or the domain expert only had to go through all those predictions, read them without having to do any action whatsoever. And only a couple of them, around 10%, they needed corrections. Okay. You can find the annotation lab on AWS Marketplace. You can try it out for free for one month and set up your project um, and annotate either text documents or images, video, audio, and so on. You can set up your team and uh, make them uh, work on annotating entities, relationships, uh, classification, for, or set up a classification project, normalization one, assertion status, and so on. You can use the pre-trained uh, models that are available from Spark, Spark NLP. Uh, you can, of course, train and use your own models without coding. Uh, and you always have a complete audit trail of tasks, completions, predictions. You can compare them between each other, customize the workflow, and so on. If you have any questions and, um, or if suggestions, we are available via Slack or um, via email. Thank you so much.